good afternoon from the Second Age of Reason. I'm here to bring up the topic of the general. This has been in the news of recent, and I think it was kind of quickly glossed over, made a little hubbub, and then disappeared too quickly. But you know, this particular one has has very many repercussions, has very many layers that need to be understood because it has effects down the road. It was put out to be simply a matter of insubordination for the command uh, in Afghanistan. And that may be, to a small extent, in essence, the general and his staff were speaking their mind. Um, and it was published. Now, it was made out to be insubordination, and so he was eventually relieved of his command, and another general put in his place. Um, we don't know exactly what transpired there, what the real issues are, but we can probably guess. Um, one might be that uh, without everybody being fully gung-ho and on board and really eager to carry out the continued wars, uh, it seemed like there might be discord in the ranks, and we can't have that, can we? And uh, so it may also have been that he was getting tired of the command as well. Uh, what is it about generals? They like to win. And you know, he pr probably knew how to win in Afghanistan. But he maybe didn't understand that the goal is not to win. The goal is to maintain maintain the balance of power. So the general would be given more resources, but just enough to keep the balance of power. Not enough to overwhelm and close it down and, and be finished with it once and for all. Which is kind of like what I call the McCarthy syndrome. Remember General McCarthy in the Korean War? Similar thing. Um, the new general going in there has also been in Iraq and is probably fully on board with the idea and will carry on as expected. It may have been just a convenience too that he wanted to retire and this is one way out that it's like burning the bridge behind him, yes, but now he can retire and do what he wants to do. More power to him in that regard. The other issue, then, is even though the new general's coming in, somebody had come out and said, well, there's only, you know, 50 to 100 combatants left in Afghanistan. And so what do we need huge military outlays still there for? Doesn't Afghanistan have their own military and their own secret service that could handle 50 to 100 people? So... That makes me wonder about that regard. Also, then we move on to the other aspect, was that, as expected, uh, some people have said that, well, a general should not have spoken out of turn, nor is people, but it, in a sense, as Americans, they have the freedom of speech, and we have the freedom of the press. And the press, of course, took advantage of that. And now, of course, there's been another dictate that nobody from the military can say anything unless it's been totally screened and approved and scripted beforehand. And uh, that, of course, puts a chill on the freedom of the press. You know, and like somebody once said, it, you know, if you can't speak freely, you're just simply not free. And that makes me wonder about the freedom of our press. And if the press has to uh, conform to such regulations, the press is not a press anymore. It's an advertising agency. So, I'll leave that thought with you, uh, moving on with the general, and we'll see where it goes. Uh, not much good for freedom of speech in the press, I'm afraid. And so, on we move. That's all for tonight. Be seeing you.